Welcome back to the channel. So you'll of course remember this guy from our previous videos. On today's episode, we're gonna be installing Make Megahertz's HDMI Plus or HD Plus as it's called into the 1.6 console that we had previously finished installing the 128 MB RAM mod onto. First things first, we're gonna to have to remove the AV connector port. And there it is. There are a couple of different ways you can do this. You can use hot air or a desoldering gun. I guess it's really a preference. Hot air is quicker, but I'm gonna try and use the desoldering gun today. And of course, the desoldering gun of choice is the Hako FR301, which many of us in the scene, as it is called or dubbed, swear by. And of course, there are a couple of different ways you can do this. You could either tin and add flux to all of these connectors here, or you can leave them as is. I think I'll probably show both methods to you guys and gals. For this particular removal process, I do like 350, but we're going to leave it at 400. We'll start by adding just a tad bit of solder to this. Maybe I do want to run this thing at 450. Mm, that didn't really flow the best, but what can you do? And remember, we're just going to experiment by doing this to half of the connector to see how it all goes, and then we'll try it on the other half with added a flux or let it solder added to it. So we have our guy ready here. So there you are. Mmm, that one's not going to clean up properly. May not have added enough of added solder to it. And the same thing for that one. Here, I'll go ahead and add some more leaded solder to this area. As an alternative, you can use some low melt solder, which I do have some here, and we may consider doing that if we're going to continue to have problems. I'm going to use some hot air. I've had better luck with the 1.0 and 1.1 consoles, but I don't know what it is today. The solder gods are just not agreeing with me. I guess I'll just apply a little bit of flux to the remainder of this, seeing as I've already done it for the whole thing. I do assure you, though, that the Hako does work for this. I'm just baffled why it's giving me so many problems. We're going to hit it at 100 air, or 99 in this case, and 450 degrees. And you can't really see it on camera, but I am pressing down with my pliers on the very corner of the connector, just ever so slightly. Once you've applied enough heat, you'll be able to grab this thing out of there like a tooth. And it came right out of there. Not in the best of conditions, not going to be salvageable, but it is out of there. There are going to be a couple of holes that we want to clear out on this connector. So I'll just begin by adding a little bit of flux to all of this, a little bit of solder, and we'll begin with the, the desoldering work. And then we'll clear out some of these holes. Now you don't necessarily need to clean all of these out. I think we only need to clear out, I think it's actually this other side over here for our 5 volts. And then we need to clear out uh, over here for our SBDIF, I believe it is, for our sound. So that looks good enough for me at the moment. If we need to do some more cleaning, we'll do so later. Let's clean up what we've done. And this right here is for the hot air. I guess it was a little too high on the feet, but they're fine. You don't need to worry about it. So here's how our front is looking. That big piece of uh, solder that we're going to need to remove right there. So there's our guy. There's where we're going to be doing the damage. All right, so now that we have our port cleaned, we can install the connector. FFC, I believe it is, right here. Or we can go ahead and get our jumpers going. And I think I'm going to do the jumpers first. We need to install the jumper to number 1112 and 1314, which is going to be from this side. So it'll be to right here, and right here, and right here, to here. So we'll go ahead and fold this in. We'll use some tweezers to bend this. That's one of them. We'll go ahead and solder that in immediately. Add a little bit of flux because flux is good. Messy, but good. So we have that first one tacked down. Let's go ahead and cut it off because I need this jumper to continue with the remainder. We'll just cut that off right there. And the excess that's on this other side. Just pre-bent the jumper and it goes right next to this other one. And just maneuver it in there. We should have enough flux from the previous jumper to continue with soldering this one in. I don't like how it's moving, so we're gonna go ahead and press down on it with some tweezers. So next on the list is our flex install. So we'll go ahead and get that out of the box. Do need the flex though, so we'll grab that out of there. 
Uh, before we do that though, let's go ahead and cut the excess on these jumpers. You can't really see them, but they're right there. Now we're gonna to wanna to install our flux, which is right here. Uh, it is recommended that you pre-tin this whole thing, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm also gonna add some flux and this capacitor over here as well. We have our non-leaded solder. It's gotta stay in the roll though. So we'll go ahead and pre-tin all of this. And now we can put our connector here. And just align it as best as humanely possible. Maybe I should have used more solder. And more flux. We're just wanting to tack this down real quick. Doesn't matter how it looks. Uh, well, that'll do. Tacked it down temporarily. We're gonna add some more flux. That looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and spray it off. So now we have our capacitor over here that we need to solder in. We might be able to do that with this soldering tip. Let's see. We'll put both the 5 volts and the SP diff in here. So this is our 5 volt, and then of course our SP diff, which is the sixth one. So right in there. I don't know that I'm going to have enough solder. Hopefully I do. It's just enough to get a temporary connection. So now I'm going to add the real amount of solder to this. There we go. That's the kind of joint you want to have. Now I'll go ahead and clean this off. And I think we're done on the back of the board. We need to install our ground wire. So let's add some flummox and let's add some solder. Go ahead and add our ground. Go ahead and do this as a righty and then lefty. Next would be our SCL and SDA lines, which are of course the paired wire. Let's go ahead and pre-tin and flux up the area. Those two wires go right there, side by side. Almost ended up putting the flux in the soldering iron holster again. Add a little bit of solder. A very strong bond. Um, the wires are exposed a little tiny bit more than I would want. However, I think we'll be fine because it's going to be sitting off of the board. We're going to first remove the fan. That way we can install this in there. So many of you may remember this tool if you're uh, part of the other scene. Yeah, it's quite a bit of dust. This console needs to be cleaned out. So I find it's easiest to slide this in here like this. I don't know if you can see that. And you're going to want to align it. And you'll want to make sure that you're aligned over here too. So I'll go ahead and get that going. You may need pliers for this step. Wow, I've never had it going that easy before. So there you are. Let's go ahead and put the fan back in. We'll just go ahead and reattach all of our cables because we're gonna be testing this console here in a couple of minutes after we finished installing the remainder of these wires. Go ahead and screw down the HD Plus chip, that way it doesn't move on us. So we got the SCL and SDA out of the way. And our SPDIF and 5 volt. Go ahead and add a little bit of flux. And I'm gonna go ahead and use some tweezers. Let's go ahead and make these look nice. All right, now our SCL and SDA lines. The blue wire is on the right hand side. The 
Excellent. We've opened up the Xenium OS web interface and we're gonna go ahead and flash a 1.6 BIOS. And we do have a drive in there. Wow, a lot of steps. Go ahead and flash that. You'll wanna name it, of course. And it is being flashed. That should, in theory, load up Evo X from the hard drive. You'll note it's in 480p, so we're gonna go ahead and update the Xenium chip, and we will be updating the HD+. I disconnected the ethernet cable. There are a few little caveats that we have to take care of first. So let's make sure a particular setting is set on here. Yep, default. So we're gonna go into Avalanche since I can't directly run the Open Xenium updating program through EvoX. File Menager. We're gonna update the HD Plus firmware. You'll notice that it's looking a little bit better over here now that we've updated the Open Xenium. So we have one caveat that we need to take care of before we can attempt to run the HD Plus app. And that would be this right over here. So your game region needs to be set to North America. I don't know if this is an issue just with Evo X, but it is something you have to do or it will not run. Now we can proceed to updating the HD Plus chip. This will actually take a little while. So there you go. It's going to begin updating after it does a two minute delay. It's too bad there isn't an option to just skip it and assume all responsibilities. This is gonna for sure be a five minutes later. Five minutes later. Now it looks like it finally finished. So now we're gonna go ahead and miss around on the settings with the HD Plus. System settings, I do want all of these. I want widescreen, yep. All right, that should do. I'm going to set the setting back because we no longer need to go into the HD Plus app. Uh, if you don't, programs will not run properly if you're launching them through Evo X. I don't know if any other dashes have that issue, but I know Evo X does. So let's go ahead and go into Media Center and see what that's doing. Now, and as you can tell, we have our 84 MB free out of the 128 MB. And looks like we're all good on this console. Well, it looks like this concludes our installation of Make Megahertz's HD Plus chip. I'd have to say I'm pleased with how it looks. I didn't really get to try it with any games. I really wanted to try it out with some 128 MB enabled games or apps besides XBMC. In our next video, you'll probably see us clean up the shell top and bottom, and of course the innards of the Xbox. And maybe as an added bonus, we'll fix that DVD drive that's in there. Now, if you enjoyed this video and this content, please remember to leave us a like and subscribe. Adios.